Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we are glad to be in the house of the Lord. Thank yeah. you, Father. Hallelujah. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. There's peace in the house of the Lord. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. In his presence, there's deliverance. Thank you, Lord. There is peace in his presence. There's joy in his presence. We thank God. Thank you, Lord. Do you know that tonight was ordained from the foundation of the world? It was not by happenstance. You just happened to be here. It was fully intentional and on purpose that you're in the house of God tonight. We thank God. Thank you, Lord. We're grateful. We're grateful. Because we know we couldn't have been here without God helping us, giving us a mind to be here on a Wednesday night, you know? When I was coming, it was kind of rainy and cold, you know? Could have stayed home, eat some bonbons, watch TV. But no, uh-uh. It's nothing like being with the saints of God in the presence of God. In the rain we thank in the here. Lord. Praise God. <laughs> What'd you say? We're dancing the rain in here. Yeah. He said, we'll dance in the rain in here. Thank you, Lord. Well, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. We're really grateful. Thank, thank, you, thank you for Jesus. allowing us to be here tonight, oh God. Every time we get a chance to lift our hands and to clap our hands and to lift our voices, we count it a privilege, God. Thank you, Father for your divine protection. Thank how you keep all our family members, how you've watched over us and protected us, oh God. Thank you for the way that was made for us to get here tonight. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for just having your way from the opening to the close. We know that there's a divine plan. There's a purpose. We just want to get right in the middle of it because there's such safety right in the middle of your will, oh God. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the words that are spoken. We thank you for the songs that are sung. We thank you, Lord, for the uh, smiles that are shared. <laughs> thank you for the hugs, oh God. I thank you, Lord, that you designed the church. You had a purpose for it, oh God. And we are so grateful for your divine plan, God. Thank you, Lord, for having your way tonight. We pray that you would be glorified. We pray that your heart would be lifted up. God, that you would enjoy us praising you, O oh God. We thank you for that. Let it be a joyful sound to you, O oh God. We thank you for our praises of being accepted by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank amen, you, amen, amen.
and be glad in it. We serve a sweet God.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Paid a big price then, but he paid the big price for what we're feeling here tonight. Amen. Amen. By his blood. Amen. We've been set free. Thank you, Jesus. To worship him in spirit and in truth. Aren't you thankful for the truth tonight? Amen. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. So the only way that we can worship him is through Jesus Christ. There's one mediator between God and man, and it's that man, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we come to the Lord in truth. Amen. We worship him in spirit, a born-again spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We just give him glory and praise tonight. Thankful. Thankful. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Amen. Amen. Well, God is good. God is good, and we're thankful Thank you, Jesus. And that's why we're here tonight. We come together as God's people to give him praise, to thank him for all that he continues to do in our lives. Amen. It just seems like I can say hallelujah 500 times, and I can say thank you, Jesus, 2,000 times, and it still ain't enough. (laughs) I can't shut up. Amen. Because I just can't find the end of it. And I'm glad. I'm so glad tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we just want to welcome everybody out on this midweek service. And uh, amen. It may be raining on the outside, but you know what? I was thinking about that on the way here tonight. You know, the Bible says that uh, the, the latter rain will be greater than the former rain. Amen. And I'm thankful to be a part of the latter rain. Amen. You know, a, a people, a remnant of people has been called by his name. To, to stand for truth and to stand firm in these last days. If nothing else, is just to be a road marker. This way to Calvary, please. <laughs> Amen. And point them to Jesus. Amen. And, uh, and I'm thankful for that. Thankful for all of those that is uh, viewing in via live stream. And, and uh, we welcome you uh, to join us in this service. And... and uh, we're thankful for all of you that came out on this rainy night. You guys must love Jesus to come out here in the rain like you have. Yeah. Amen. Rain, sleet, or snow. God's worshipers will prevail. Amen. I'm thankful for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, I can't wait till we get into the meat of the service here tonight. We're going to have a special treat, and uh, I'm thankful for that. Um, well, got some announcements here. This is the February, it says the February the 12th Valentine edition. Uh oh, got a deep You got a number there. What's that? Amen. Just a reminder Valentine's Day is Friday. Cheerleaders. Amen. <laughs> Peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> I see the crystal raindrops fall and the beauty of it all is when the sun comes shining through. To make those rainbows in my mind with a baby you some time and I want to spend some time with you.
Bruce, she's got way too much time on her hands. <laughs> she's good at that stuff. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Amen. Yay, Casey. Amen. <laughs> All right. This meeting is for, what meeting is that? Teen camp meeting. Is that all we know? Teen camp meeting. This meeting is for teens, parents, and guardians, and counselors, and anyone interested in helping at teen camp. All right. So do we Sunday have no after Sunday after church? Okay. Wow. All right. And we have the February, we have the expo coming up. Is that this weekend also? Got all kinds of stuff going on. Okay. <laughs> have we got, uh, we usually, the No County Chapter usually takes care of the Saturdays, so we, you guys got all that worked out and everybody's set in place, and that's pretty, pretty neat. I can't remember how long we've been doing that expo up there, but there's about a million people that go, go in up there, and so it's a great place to witness for Jesus. Amen. So we just want to remind everybody about that. There's a Women of Hope meeting coming up on Thursday, February the 20th at 6.30 p.m. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> They're gone. Go <laughs> all right, all invited. Is it still going? <laughs> to the Monday night Bible study. Amen. And the Wednesday midweek refuel. That's what we're doing tonight, getting refueled. And of course, Sunday services at 10 a.m. Amen. Amen. The Word of God admonishes us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as some do, but do it all the more as we see the day of His return approaching. Amen. And so uh, I'm looking for Him to come back any day now. Amen. Wouldn't it be cool if He came back while we're just in the middle of one of the most far out praise services and just praising him and whoo in the moment in the twinkling of an eye we'll all be standing at gate eight thank you jesus thank you jesus oh do we have any first-time visitors with us tonight first-time visitors first time you've been here oh, to hey. ellisville house of prayer oh yeah oh there she is all right welcome i'm glad you're here Amen. All of our visitors are special. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So, uh, what's that? You got an announcement? You think we ought to do the offering? Well, let's have the ushers come in. This is the best part. All right. Going to have our, everybody stand. We're going to continue our worship with our giving tonight. All right, if you have your tithe, your offering in your hand, let's lift it up to the Lord. We stand on the Word of God. Luke 6, 38 tells us to give. Yes. It, shall be given unto you. it shall be given unto you. Good measure. measure. Press down. down. Shaken together. Shake and running over. Running over. Shall men give, men give into your bosom. Into your bosom. For with the same measure... That you give, it shall be given unto you again. In Jesus' name.
you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sister Darlene Hostetter, would you lift up your voice tonight, sister, and bless these tithe and offerings. All right. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to have a word tonight given by our sister, Lisa Cisco, the Cisco kid. All right. You're all hooked up. Is it coming through okay? All right. Well, it's been a while since I've done a presentation, so please bear with me. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm feeling like something good is going to happen. Oh, and weren't the words of the, the songs just wonderful? And it's so appropriate. I gave him an idea what the topic was going to be, and I don't think that those... The songs and the lyrics could have been any more perfect. So thank you to the singers. Thank you, Kurt, for helping out with the camera back there. And um, we're going to have a wonderful topic tonight. And it's something that's near and dear to my heart. And so I'm going to share a little bit about my experience uh, that I've in my journey. But more importantly, I want to talk to all of us about how we can improve our condition of our hearts. So I've titled this message, Heart to Heart with God. But before we get started, let's say a, a prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening, and I ask that you help us open our hearts and receive the message you have for us tonight. Speak to our hearts as only you can. You created us, and you know our hearts. You know who we are, what we are going through, and how to help us. Help us to be more like you so that we can do as your word says and to have peace within ourselves and with our fellow man. Help us to have the mind and heart of Christ, your son. Holy Spirit, be our comforter and teacher tonight. Help us to learn and retain this message, to share it and live it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. When we think about hearts, we might think of our physical heart, or we might think about like that gut feeling that we have, the understanding of our heart. And I've explored the word heart in the Bible, and how many verses do you think there are in the New International Version that has the word heart in it. Anybody want to venture a guess? 50? 100? 200? 300? 400? 500? 600? 725 times. In the King James Version, there's over 800. So guess which version that we might share tonight. No, just kidding. <laughs> there's a lot of good in there. So I would like to explore all 800 and verses tonight. <laughs> we have some we have some game at heart here. Uh, no, we won't get to uh, share all of those verses and messages, but we will hit the highlights. And when I do something, I like for it to be participatory. So there's going to be a chance for you to chime in because we're all walking this journey we call life, and we all have life experiences. No two people have the sh same set of experiences, right? And we experience things at different times. And what I've learned in my life, whenever struggles have come my way, that there is usually someone that God sends to me to help me through. 
And so tonight, I'm trying to be more bold and share what I know to maybe help some other people and encourage you to share your story because that's why you have that story. All right. So one of the first things I want to talk about is some of the expressions. There's everyday expressions we use with the word heart in it. And chime in if you'd like. Um, He's got a big heart. She's got a cold heart. He has a heart of gold. She has a broken heart for her children. God said in the Bible that King David was a man after God's own heart. Uh, There's expression, eat your heart out. That kind of means not to do it literally, although some in the world might want to do that. But what it's referring to is having a jealous heart. So, cross your heart and hope to die. That's something we don't want to use it right (laughs) But what about if somebody sneezes, what do you say? Bless you, right? And the story behind that is they would say bless you. That means bless your heart because they used to think that if you sneeze that you might die. So bless you. (laughs) All right. Uh, Anybody else? Can you think of an expression that has the word heart in it? Crush your heart? Yep. Love your heart. Protect your heart. I think I invented one. I put duct tape around my heart. How many of you felt like that? You've had a broken heart and you don't want it to be broken? Super glue to mend your heart? Cold heart. Stone heart. We have the Bible talks about men having stone hearts. And what does he want? He wants us to have a warm, fleshy heart, right? So that he can talk to us and be with us. Any others? Pardon me? Pure heart, yeah, that's a what? Clean heart. That's a good one. A bleeding heart, yes. Yes. What about some songs? And we, we sang songs tonight that have the word heart in it. One that comes to my mind is, it takes me back a few years, but Achy Breaky Heart by <laughs> Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> Listen to my heart, yeah. One that, the song that when I talked to Pastor Larry about doing a message this evening is the song just kept ringing and ringing in my head is Here's My Heart, Lord, Speak What is True by Lauren Daigle. And we've sang it at um, a few times and we've sang it at conferences, but it's just something that really ministers to my heart. Oh, and tonight I, I come up with one, uh, pound, your heart pounding out of your chest. I kind of had that episode when I was getting ready for this and it's like, <gasps> I don't know. And dear Becky, Sister Becky, come over, and she offered to pray with me. And uh, we felt the anointing fall, and that's just a sweet, sweet feeling. And it's so precious. And that's what I want to, to share with you tonight, is to help us when we're going through troubled times, that we seek God with all of our heart, and he will help us. So be ready to chime in, because I'm sure you've had some experiences that you can share with others. <clears throat> There's another song, and, and Pastor, I think we'll sing that a little bit later, actually, so maybe I'll hold off on that. But uh, there is an expression that we're running after God, God's heart. Do you feel like that sometimes, that we, we want to be where he is because we know that's a better place? Yeah. So let's keep looking toward him and... That means that the, some of the stuff that's behind us, we're to leave it there, right? Yeah. And I, that's a hard message for me. And I, anyone that knows me and has talked to me, I hold on to things. I hold on to my memories. I hold on to feelings. And just a couple of weeks ago, I had someone share a message with me that helped me to release some of my past so that I can focus more on the future, and I'm very thankful for that. Well, like I said, tonight's message is heart-to-heart with God. And when I think of hearts, I think of heartbeats. And I remember when I was a little girl, and I was very fortunate to have a mom and dad that truly loved me and were awesome parents. And Katrina knows my mom and dad. And uh, I was a daddy's girl. I liked to go with him when he went mushroom hunting, fishing, 
you know, driving in a truck, I was always good to go. And uh, I liked to sit on his lap. And sometimes he would grow a beard, and I would get a comb, and I would comb his beard. So I was up close and, you know, and looking for the, he had kind of curly hair, red beard because he had Irish blood in him. So I do too. <laughs> That's a warning. <laughs> but I would be up close, and then sometimes he'd go, and then I'd jump, and we'd both laugh. And those times were precious. And sometimes I would lay on his chest, and I could hear his heart beating. And that was just the most secure feeling that I could have is listening to my dad's heartbeat. And I believe that if we get quiet, we can hear God's heartbeat for us. He wants us to be that close. How many of you in your quiet time, you feel that way, that you're so close that you can feel God's heartbeat? Because he beats for us. And we, he, he made us in his image, right? So if we have a heartbeat, then God has a heartbeat. So let's learn more about that. Sorry. <laughs> There's an expression in the Bible that, that calling God, I always referred to him as God growing up and uh, maybe Heavenly Father and sometimes in the prayers is like Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father over and over again. But I didn't use the word Abba. But after I learned what Abba means, that it's like calling our Heavenly Father, Daddy. And that's how he wants to be to us. He is our Father because he created us. Like our parents had a participation in creating us. He can be king in our lives because he can rule. But he really, really loves to be Daddy because he loves to be close to us. And of those men that are here tonight, if you're fortunate enough to be a father, what is your sweetest moments and memories with your kids? I would venture to say it's when you're close, when you feel that bond with them. So don't you know that's what our Heavenly Father wants with us? When he's a gentleman, he's not going to push himself on us. He's created us to have a will, but he loves it when we open that door. Revelation 3.20, what's he say? Jesus stands at the door and knocks. He doesn't barge in. He's standing there knocking, and he's ready to come in. But we have to open the door and let him. And then what will he do? He'll sup with us. He'll spend time with us. So that's, that's where we want to be. So I would encourage you, when you're praying, is pray and use the word Abba, like Daddy, or say Daddy. Talk to him like you would your earthly father. After my dad passed away 25 years ago, it, it made my prayer life a little bit more intimate because I was thinking my earthly father was in heaven. So I was kind of getting the feeling that I had a father. It, it enhanced the idea of a father in heaven, and it made it more personal. And like I said, it enhanced my prayer life. And I love using that expression, Abba. I know V. McCarter. You guys know V, right? And one of the things that she's blessed me with in the few years that I've known her as a dear friend is that she talks to God. She calls him Father all the time. And so I started doing that, and that feels really good. So maybe you'll want to do that a little bit more and think of God as the Father who knows how to give good gifts to his children. And when the kids ask for something, he's not, if they ask for bread, he's not going to give them a stone. He wants to do good things for us. And when we talk about hearts, <clears throat> there's that physical heart. In the Bible, it's called you know, ca the cardio word. And God wants us to have a strong heart. And the heart is like the center of our physical being. What happens when our heart fails and doesn't work right? It gives us trouble, right? And we can feel that. Sometimes we can be so stressed that we feel like we are going to have a heart attack and our heart breaks. And sometimes people do. When I was 37 and my husband was 38, <clears throat> he had a heart attack. It was a mild one. It was a warning. And three weeks later, he had to have some stints put in. 
And if a different vessel had a clogged, the, the one that goes over the top of our heart, it would have been game over. But like I said, we had that warning call. And as we're consulting with a couple doctors to try to figure out how we're going to get him fixed up, and one doctor said, it's kind of like having a broken elbow these days. And I was like, oh, I never thought of having the heart attack as a broken elbow. But our technology is great. There's a lot of things that we can do. And having that chance to get it mended. And the fix was kind of painful because they, when they put the stent in, they had to block an artery. And so it basically caused him to have a heart attack again. But in the hospital, he was in the bed and I'm by his side, and I spend that time praying. You know, our, our world changed that day that he had that near-death experience. And uh, I didn't know what I would do if he wasn't there. We got through that. And uh, it... I feel like it made me a stronger person because instead of relying so much on m my earthly husband, I had to direct more of my attention on my heavenly father. And that's a good lesson. And, and that's one that's, that's gotten me through a lot of situations. So I, after that experience, we started working on how we can eat better, you know, make better decisions to take care of our physical hearts because we wanted to live longer for our kids. So I want you to be challenged. How can you take better care of your physical heart? Anybody have some suggestions? Exercise. Exercise. That is good. Your wife would be happy to hear you say that. Casey, are you watching? <laughs> That is excellent. We, we need to exercise. What's another thing that we can do to take care of our hearts? Eat your veggies. What? I heard something over here. Less sweets. Oh, that's a hard one. Did you have to bring that one up? Ugh. Quit smoking. That is a huge one. Less stress. That's a good one. And that's, there's, all, there's tips we can do for all of those things. But any others that you can think of? Less red meat? Okay, so taking care of yourselves, what you eat, your stress levels, those are all important things. And what happens when our heart is, our physical heart is healthy? We tend to feel better emotionally, don't we? And when we feel bad physically, that tends to spiral us down spiritually. And so that's kind of a segue into talking about the spiritual side of our hearts. And if you're like me, I mean, when you talk about hearts, I get a little confused because there's the emotions. And some people will tell you that your emotions will trick you and you can't trust them. But then other times the, it's your emotions that give you power and passion and strength to carry on. And I honestly was at a point when things weren't going right that I felt so numb and confused and stuck I, start, I read a book where somebody was expressing words, putting words to how I was feeling. And I'm like, somebody else knows what I'm going through. And it gave me a little bit of direction to get out of being unstuck and on a road of making sense of some of these things. So maybe after this evening, some of the terms that we use will make a little bit better sense. And I like how my uh, Pastor Kelly it recently has you know, talked about this. We are spirit. We have a body. And we have a soul. And in our body, we, there's a lot of parts. And Pastor Larry's really good about talking about the, our parts. And we need each other, right? That our nose doesn't like our armpits. <laughs> we have our ears, our nose, our mouth, our hearts. The physical heart, but then also the spiritual heart. So in the spiritual heart is sometimes a little bit harder to wrap around because it's kind of abstract. But think of it as that's where emotions are. That's where your deep understanding is. Your spiritual heart works with your brain. Think of your brain like a computer. It's programmed. It's made to, to calculate, to compute. It doesn't, it doesn't have the emotions in it. That's coming from your heart. Your spirit 
guides your mind and your brain, and your brain can tell the rest of your body to be in a state of fear or in stress. So when you're stressed out, don't get stuck up in your head and try to reason things out. It's go to your inner man where God talks to us, our spiritual heart, because that's where our truth is. That's where our purpose is. That's where our deepest emotions are. You know, like when someone says, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, then you know that with my whole being, I'm very thankful and grateful. And when we pray for others, it should be coming from that bottom of our heart where our spirit man is. Our physical hearts, Pastor Mike, um, Pastor, he talked last, his last sermon, he was talking about our hearts and defibrillators. And what do the defibrillators do? They shock us, right? That electricity, that bolt. And the reason why that works is because our bodies have electricity running through it. Did you know that our heart and our brain both have an electromagnetic field around them? And when we have that fight to flight or freeze response, that's not coming from our brain. It takes too much time to think about that we should react. That's coming from our heart. Instantly, we get that feeling that we need to move. All of our cells in our body get that message from our heart elect electrically, like through radio waves, that we need to move or we need to freeze. So our heart is very powerful. So don't underestimate the power of our physical heart and how it works with our spiritual heart. So when we're stressed, our bodies are making a hormone, or stress hormone, cortisol. And our bodies basically, like the word says, we're in fear or we're in love. So we can on purpose switch our mindset and our brain waves by the power of our spirit and our heart. So when things are going wrong, don't settle for that state. Know that you can change it. You can ask for help. Most importantly, you can ask for God's help, and he'll be more than happy to do that. So that kind of gives us a good lead-in to what I want us to do. I think you, do you all have some paper now? We're basically going to write a little, not a Valentine's Day card, but it's going to be kind of a love letter. It's going to be a card between you and God. The title of the message is Heart to Heart with God. And so what I'd like for you to do is on the front of it is to write the words, here I am. Now, those words are significant because the here talks about this moment in time. So we're going to do a snapshot of where we are, how we're feeling tonight. And I, that's self-explanatory, that's talking about us and am. So that's our being and who we are. So here I am. We sing songs, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. That's a sign of here we are to surrender. So here in this moment in time, we're going to take these next few minutes and we're going to surrender our thoughts to being closer to God. And we're going to look at our heart to heart connection with him. So right across the top, here I am. Now, I drew this ahead of time, but I, you can draw a circle face, put a couple dots and glasses if you have glasses like I do or what. But just draw a little s picture of yourself. Write your whole legal name, the name that your parents gave you, because that's important. They created you. They named you. God also, he created you, and he sometimes changes names. Can you think of times in the Bible where when people have this intimate relationship with him, he's changed their name? Who did Jacob become? Sarai became, or Sarah became, or, yeah. Sarai became Sarah. Abram became Abraham. Saul became Paul. So, Go ahead and put your name that you were born with. 
And later on, if you want to put down a name that if God has given you a different name, go ahead and, and you can write that down. And then mark the date. Today is February 12th, 2020. 2020. We're going to have clear vision tonight. How about that? Okay, so if you've got that, then the next page that we're going to do is we're going to title this Me. And then I want you to draw, and it doesn't have to be really nice, but draw yourself a heart. In the space between me and the heart, I want you to just jot down a few descriptive words about who you are, what you do. So maybe you're a cop, maybe you're a father, maybe you're a grandma, but just jot down a few things that would describe you. Like if you meet somebody from the first time, what would you say? Oh, I didn't mean to make that heart bigger or smaller, actually. Let's do this. <laughs> okay, inside of what, Michelle? Oh, it's 8.05. Yep, I asked her to give me signs so I can kind of keep this going. Inside of the heart, I want you to put some words that would describe you. And it, it could be emotions. It could be... Um, but some decisions that you're making, some concerns. That, what's on your heart? Do you have a burden on your heart? Just jot that down. If you're joyful, if you're patient, if you're, if you're happy, just put down the first few things that come to the mind. That's what's good to put here. <laughs> and you don't have to share this with everybody else. This is, this is for you. And it can be for your spouse. And do you have something to share with the class? <laughs> okay. Okay. Wasn't that video of the pastor and Gracie awesome? Peanut butter and jelly. Much mustard and ketchup. Yeah. Don't they make a wonderful pair? Yes. You know who else makes a wonderful pair? Us and God. So let's keep going. So did you jot down some things? Okay. Okay. So now, right, right on the next side, God, and then in the heart, um, or between here and God, put just a few words how you would describe God to you. Maybe Father, there's the Son, there's the Holy Spirit. Maybe you want to put Abba. And then inside the heart, put some of the characteristics. Maybe you think of him as being faithful, true. What are some other ways that we can describe God's heart? Loving? Loving, patient? What was that? Just. Oh, well, we got a comment from the peanut gallery. <laughs> Love you, Pastor Tony. <laughs> Forgiving, calming. Okay. Alpha and Omega, yeah. What, Brother Timmons, what did you say? Truth. Hope. I heard some. Friend, okay. Okay. Everlasting, faithful, perfect. All right. So there's a lot of ways that we can describe him. All right, so he, oh, yes, he is. And, you know, in the Bible, 
when there's the difference when they have Lord spelled L O R D with only the L capitalized, and then when it's L O R D all caps, that's like Elohim. And so I love, and I try to do this in our songs whenever we're using the word Lord, is I try to capitalize it because that is special. L O R D. Because there's some other creature that uh, wants to be called Lord as well, right? And there's, and he's just a li- God with a little G. So we're going to go back and talk about our big God because he's got a big heart, right? This last page, the back page for you, I want you to write God's promises to me. <clears throat> Is there a Bible verse that has helped carry you through that you think of when you're having hard times? Maybe there's a promise that God has made to you that jumps out. John 3.16, okay. That John 3.16. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Nick, can you pull up John 3.16? Deuteronomy, what? And what is the essence of that? He's always with me wherever I go. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. that's one of Pastor Mike's favorites, that God has a plan for us, a purpose not to harm us, right? 1 John 4 and 4. And what does that... Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. What about Philippians 4.13? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And don't you know that that's our physical heart, our spiritual heart, our heads, our feet, everything. (laughs) Isaiah 41.13. And what is that one? Yep. If Mike Stankovic was here, he'd say, that'd preach. (laughs) Michelle? Proverbs 3, 5. What is that? Yeah. Lean not unto the own understanding, but yes. Fourteen to seventeen, and what is that? Yeah, the the bu- okay. That was Isaiah 54, seven, 14 through 17. I think a lot of us might remember the, the, the key in that, the 54, 17, is nothing, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And what she was reading, I know you couldn't hear over the, <laughs> through the camera lens, but it, is God saying that he created the destroyer, so he has control of the situation. And so that's a good one. Anyone else? Isaiah 41.10, that's another good one. And that one is? Yes. That's another one where God is telling us not to have fear. And how many times does the Bible talk about fear? How many verses? How many? 
365 times he talks about fear. Over 700 times he's talked about love. I think that there's a strong message here. So God is saying that he will strengthen us with his righteous right hand. And sometime I'd like to come back and just talk about his righteous right hand because there's a lot of verses that have to do with that, his righteousness, his right hand. A uh, couple more. Isaiah what? Yes, that's what I thought Aunt Linda was going to say. Isaiah 41, 40, 40, 31. Isaiah 40, 31, that we will re renew our strength like an eagle. Those who wait on the Lord, you know, we don't have to do all of the work. And that was... An, that's a powerful message is that sometimes that we try to reason and we try to do so much. It's like the people who try to be good and you can't be good enough. You can't do the work yourself. You need to be quiet, be still and rest. And then God will do the work for us. I think I heard one more. Ah, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Well, I, when you say that, I have, to, I have to tell you something, is that this, this phrase, here I am, I kind of, my spirit just bubbles whenever I hear that. Because through Genesis, from the story with Abraham, when God calls down to Abraham, Abraham, and Abraham answers, here I am, through Samuel getting woken up in the night, and Elisha says, go back to bed, and if you, if you hear that voice, as you get up and say, here I am. And listen, and in Revelation 3.20, some versions of the Bible, when Jesus is at the door, he says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. So through, from Genesis through Revelation, there's this dialogue going back and forth between man and our creator, our father, our daddy. And it's a lovely book of relationships. And we can have that. God also says, I think it's in Isaiah 58, he says, if you call out my name, I will answer, right? He will say, here I am. But you know what I found in Isaiah 65, 1? He will even be there for people who don't call out to him. How many of you heard stories even like recently that there are people um, in other countries that don't know the Christian faith, but Jesus has appeared to them? And they've turned their heart because Jesus, like the Bible said, he will be found by people who aren't even looking. But if you want to find him, what does God say? Draw nigh to him and he will draw nigh to you. So there's a lot of good stuff that we can have. So we have the promises that all of these things that God will do for us, that will strengthen us and help us. We talk about us. Our condition changes a lot because we live in a sinful world, and it's like darts are being thrown at us all the time. And what is the reference about, um, I, I have it in here, um, about nothing can separate us from the love of God? That's a good one. Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28. Can you put that one up, Nick? Romans 8, 28. Um, Psalm 24. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. Ser in Deuteronomy 28, 47. Serve the Lord your God with joyfulness and gladness of, of heart. Hebrews 12, 3. So that you will not grow weary and lose heart. If we're anxious... We're supposed to think about good things, right? Yeah. So there is a lot of promises. Um, uh, there's a Bible verse about nothing separating us. Do you have? Okay. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And that's a good feeling when you know that you're doing the things that God wants you to do. And that he is with us. And what's, if, if he calls you, he will equip you. 
1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7, it talks about God and, and his characteristics. And I just want to kind of come to a close with this is that uh, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And can't you see if, if we can learn to live more like that and overcome the evil that's in the world, that this world could be a better place? So in Psalm 147.3, it says, He heals the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. And he doesn't use duct tape or super glue or what other invention that we can have. But he heals us up in a way that our heart becomes even better. Yes. So if the, if the uh, worship team can come, we have uh, another song or two that I think will bless our hearts. And if you are in a place where you're feeling challenged maybe you're feeling troubled in heart, then you can come up and we have our prayer warriors can pray with you. And if you have a testimony, is share it with people. Tell them about how big your God is. I hope that you've gotten something out of this message this evening and that you have your paper to take home with you. And you can use it to maybe put more notes on it. And make sure you concentrate on these promises so that when you're feeling troubled and down in spirit, you can be reminded of the promises that God has for us, that we don't have to be troubled, and that uh, our joy will come in the morning. And so listen to the words of these songs. I think you really... Enjoy them.
Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you that, that you have a heart after us, Father God. And Lord God, you have created a new heart in us, Father God. Lord, a heart that beats after you like the, like the deer pants after the water brook, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you've, that you've taken out that old stony heart, Lord God, and put in a heart of flesh, Father God. A soft heart, Father God. Lord, a, a changed heart, Father. Lord, we thank you, Father God. Lord, for that born-again experience, Lord God, that you've given us, Father, through your Holy Spirit. Lord God, we thank you, Father God, that yes, you are our Abba, our Daddy, our Father God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. Lord, that we can, we can share our deepest secrets with you, Lord God, because you know already. You know our heart, Lord God. You search the deep thoughts, Lord God. You search the reins of our heart. And Father God, we're so glad, Lord God, that we can say we love you, Lord God. And we're not ashamed, Lord God. We're so, we're so proud, Lord God, to be called one of your own, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you've given us a heart after you. Lord, we praise you. We thank you, Lord God. Give everybody traveling mercies and safeties on the way home. Lord God, help us, Father God, to meditate, Lord God, uh, upon you, Lord God, and what we've heard here tonight, Father God. We just we thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. <clears throat> 